this past week was the first week of classes for many of our K through 12 students in the community. I know that it's been a tough week for many students and parents and teachers. Uh, the coronavirus has had a major impact on how we do school. And some of our students are going to school in person two days a week, and then others are logging on virtually with technology. Will you join me in prayer uh, just to begin our time, a prayer for our schools and our teachers and our students? Lord Jesus, we pause now to lift a special prayer for all of our students and parents and teachers, school administrators and staff. We thank you for giving us the ability to learn, and we are grateful for the public and private schools in our community and all who work in them to help our children grow in knowledge and character. We thank you for the gifts you have given to teachers. Help them this year, Father, and give them strength and passion as they teach in entirely new ways. Lord, we ask you to protect our students and teachers and families this school year. Give our leaders wisdom as they make difficult decisions about how to adapt our schooling in a changing environment. We pray especially for our children and ask that you help them to be safe and resilient and to continue to learn not only their core subjects, but also how to be responsible and caring and hopeful. And give us all an extra measure of patience and wisdom. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord, who conquered death. Amen. Did you ever have to write an acrostic poem in school? You know, one of those poems that you write the word vertically and then go down each uh, letter of that word and come up with other words or phrases that relate to that first word. I was looking this week at uh, acrostic poems that teachers have used in school. Maybe somebody used this this past week. I came across a poem on kindness. Uh, listen to this acrostic poem written by Lenora McWhorter. Kindness is shown by what we say and do. It says to the other person, I care about you. Never neglect to show kindness to everyone you see, day or night, young or old, whoever it may be. Nothing touches the heart like a big, warm smile. Everyone needs to feel loved, whether adult or child. So smile at someone to show them that you care. Show kindness and love to everyone, everywhere. Now this isn't the main focus of the message today, but I do want to pause and say that we need more kindness in our world. Kindness is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We show the world that Jesus is living within us when we choose to be kind to others. So let's do that this week. Practice kindness. Several weeks ago, I read a newly released book by Christian scholar N.T. Wright called God and the Pandemic. In this book, Wright cautions us as Christians to avoid trying to connect too many dots right now. It's not wise, he says, to try and say that the coronavirus happened because of such and such sin, or because God is trying to teach us something, or you know, fill in the blank. No, in this time of suffering, Professor Wright recommends that we begin with the ancient biblical practice of lament. The thing is, we don't do lament very well, at least I don't. Uh, so this morning, let's listen to what God's Word tells us about expressing our feelings and our faith in lament. You probably couldn't tell it when Suzanne was reading, but the words of Lamentations 3 in Hebrew are actually an acrostic poem. In fact, the first four chapters of the book of Lamentations are each individual acrostic poems that use the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet to begin each sentence. 
the author of Lamentations pours out his heart to God, expressing grief and frustration and anger in every possible way. You could say it's an A to Z accounting, or in Hebrew it's an Aleph to Tav accounting. It covers everything of the terrible events that surrounded the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in the year 586 B.C. It tries to name all the things that have been lost, people and property and all the emotions that are connected to that loss, hurt, anger, guilt, despair. I, I tried to write my own acrostic poem about lamentations and what the word lament might actually mean. So here's our word lament, and in the book of Lamentations, we can see that loss of life and land make me angry with God. My heart is broken, and my enemies are victorious. Why, God? Now is the time for you to act, God, for the temple and our traditions are destroyed. Now, lament is one of those Bible words, those Christian words that doesn't really mean much in the world today. It's not a popular word or phrase. It sounds kind of boring or depressing. Why, why would you want to focus on the negatives? There's that song in the musical Bye Bye Birdie. Gray skies are going to clear up, put on a happy face. Brush off the clouds and cheer up, put on a happy face. That's the, the way we want to live. And it is true that as Christians, we have so much to be thankful for, and we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit who gives us that fruit of joy. And because Jesus rose from the dead, we have a great hope for the future. But we still have to face the reality that we are in a global pandemic. Millions of people have gotten sick. Hundreds of thousands have died. This virus has had a profound impact on our lives, and we can't just put on a happy face and pretend that all is well. We have to deal with these emotions, these feelings, and we need to name them. If we don't, we're going to explode out in different unhelpful ways. Now, we don't need to dwell on them, to mope, but we need to acknowledge them and the present reality of our suffering. And you can describe it in different ways. Some say may grieve or mourn, groan, weep. I've heard people say, maybe you have, I just need to vent. And I like that word, vent, rhymes with lament. So maybe if you're struggling with lament, you just think about you know, venting to God. Because when people in the Bible went through tough times, they turned to God in lament. In the Bible, many of the laments follow a pattern that begins with crying out to God. In the midst of pain and tears, a deep cry, God, where are you? A lament is a cry to God. And the next step, then, is to plead for God's help. Sometimes the request is for the individual, Lord, save me. Sometimes it's for the group, Lord, save us. Defeat our enemies, restore our lives, bring us home again. Make the injustice stop. Make things right in the world. But the final step is to turn to praise, to trust to hope. Lament is always done in the context of God's covenant love. Lord, we remember your great love and faithfulness, and this gives us hope. And so, as we look at the book of Lamentations this morning and the scripture that we heard, these are the verses of that turn to hope, to praise but I think we needed to hear the context of uh, how we got to there. There was a lot of complaining that goes on if you read the first three chapters of Lamentation. A lot of venting to God. The verses that we read, verses 19 through 26, are the 7th, 8th, and ninth letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Zion, 
Get and Tet, if I'm saying it right, I'm, I don't speak Hebrew. But after the uh, writer has named all of these devastations that he has experienced and his people have experienced, listen to this turn toward praise. Verse 19, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I, remember, I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is God's faithfulness. God is always faithful in a constantly changing world where we can't even count on a normal school schedule. God is unchanging. Though your friend might fail to keep a promise, God always keeps his promises. When we constantly see examples of people who are faithless, we know that God is always faithful, and this gives us hope. So now that school is back in session, I think uh, each one of us has some homework to do. And our assignment is to, to practice lamenting. Now I confess, I'm not very good at it. In fact, I think I'm preaching to myself today more than I am to you. But let's all make a point this week to name several things that you need to lament. At least three of them. If you can do more, that's even better. Maybe you can write them down or cry them out in prayer to God, talk to a friend or a pastor or a counselor. Mr. Rogers famously said, when we can talk about our feelings, they become less overwhelming and less upsetting, less scary. And our God is big enough to handle all of our venting. We express those feelings of hurt and anger, and as we do, we submit those emotions to God and to God's will, and only then are we able to relinquish and let go of the burdens of our heart. And then we end by turning to praise, to trust, to hope. We end by reminding ourselves that God is good and faithful and full of love. So I'd like to practice this morning. Uh, here's my lament for today. God, I grieve for those who have died from the coronavirus. Every life is precious in your sight, and it especially breaks my heart to hear of doctors and nurses who have died as they were trying to save others. I weep with my friend who lost his uncle to the virus. Lord, have mercy on us, heal us, save us. It's not fair, God, that so many people have lost their jobs or had their hours cut drastically because of this virus. We need you to do something. We want to get to work, and yet we don't want to spread the disease or death in our community. Help us. It's so frustrating, God, to figure out school this year. I grieve for students who are struggling with virtual learning and for parents who are struggling to adjust their work schedules to fit in with virtual school. It is hard. Lord, wake up and do something about this tragedy so that our family, so that we can visit our family and friends who are in nursing homes and hospitals and they can't see their visitors. I grieve for the deep divisions in our nation and the constant bombardment from all sides that we need to be angry or afraid. There is so much healing that needs to happen and so little trust. I'm sad that my family had to cancel plans to meet with extended family this summer to celebrate my grandparents' 70th wedding anniversary. We would have had such a good time and made so many good memories. And Lord, it's sad that when someone that we love dies and goes to be with you, sometimes we can't even meet to have a funeral, or if we do, we're wearing masks and not even able to really hug people or comfort them. Restore us, God, quickly, 
so that we can be close to our, our friends, our neighbors, our family. God, I really miss playing racquetball. I know it seems trivial, but it's my favorite sport, and I don't know when I'm going to get to play again or would even feel safe to be in that court again. And I haven't eaten in a restaurant since March, and I miss that. These past five months have been hard, and it's probably going to be a lot longer. We don't know. But I don't know, God. I need some help to make it through. And I lament that as I'm here in this sanctuary today, that I can't be with my sisters and brothers in Christ. King David says in Psalm 42, My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. And then listen to how he changes his focus. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Yes, God, even through all of these struggles, I trust in you. I know that you are faithful. You woke me up this morning, God. Every morning your mercies are new. I thank you, Jesus, for saving me from my sins. Thank you for giving me an eternal home with you. Give me strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. I don't think it's wise for us today to try to put on a happy face. We cannot pretend and wish this pandemic away. But the Bible shows us a path to walk in times like these. We express our hurts and our sufferings through our lament. Cry out to God. Don't hide your hurt, your anger, your frustration. Present your request to God. And then turn and remember God's goodness. Praise Him. God is always faithful. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I remember them well, and my soul is downcast. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I said to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Amen.